Hey guys, a little bit of a different video here, but I'm doing my submissions to the Rocket and Raygun Awards. These are the gaming awards that Victor Lucas from Electronic Playground has every year, and he has a very special category this year, which is Games of the Decade. We are going into 2020, so that's pretty cool, and I get to talk about all the best games that came out. I don't have any submissions for 2019. I just 100%ed Red Dead 2. So I'm not gonna have any submissions for the 2019 kind of best of year, but I do have a few suggestions for best games of the decade in certain categories, which I'm very happy to talk about because some of them are very much enjoyed, some of them are a little bit different from what Vic has suggested, and just interested in what other people say. So starting off with my favorite racing game of the decade, it's definitely going to be Forza Horizon 3. I had been out of a gaming racing slum for so long, Forza Horizon 3 was just like a breath of fresh air. I've never usually been a fan of open world racing games, but this game made me love it from all the different activities you could do, the absolutely beautiful vistas of Australia to explore, all the cool cars to drive around in, and just the kind of arcade mechanics of it, the idea of taking a Lamborghini through forest and hitting over all these fences and trees and whatnot and still being able to go at 200 kilometers an hour was really, really fun. I explored every aspect of the main map and then I did all the DLC. Forza Horizon 3 just revitalized the racing genre for me. It was addicting, it was fun, and I couldn't put it down. I loved Forza Horizon 3 and that's why it's my choice for racing game of the decade. Now my choice for action adventure game of the decade is a little different. It's Shadow of Mordor. I like this game so much, I bought it twice. Shadow of Mordor took the combat aspects of the Arkham games, it took the stealth and building traversal of the Assassin's Creed games, and it put it into a Tolkien story on steroids. And then with the Nemesis system, which was a truly a unique gaming creation that made the game addicting. Never before have I been so motivated by revenge in a video game. Every Uruk that you met had a different story, and then that story even multiplied even more, whether you killed him, maimed him, or he killed you. Especially if he killed you. The aspect of one more thing was so evident in this game that I had multiple sessions that went over 10 hours. The combat had strategic elements to it. You couldn't just counter kill everything. You actually had to play smart sometimes you had to run away but it was always engaging the dlc was also really great with the bright lord being one of the best DLCs in an action adventure game I've ever played. The Celebrimbor specs of the character were so good, it literally was the perfect perk setup for your character. I liked playing the DLC more than the original game once that DLC came out. And those are my reasons why I believe Shadow of Mortar should definitely be considered for action adventure game of the decade. My action game recommendation for the decade is Titanfall 2. Titanfall was a great gaming concept. Its sole release on the Xbox One was unfortunate because not a lot of people got interested interested in it, but it still had a great combat aspect there, it just was kind of muddled with its original release. Titanfall 2 took all the good aspects from Titanfall, added a dope storyline, and then made it the absolute amazing shooter game that it is. The multiplayer is crisp, the Titan versus pilot mechanics are fantastic. You can take down a Titan while a pilot and vice versa, obviously, but the balancing is just so well done. That grappling gun, every time I was able to hook people and like woo-chock kick them, it was so fun. The story was really well done, way better than it should be. Obviously, the biggest tragedy of this game is that EA buried this game with Battlefield 1, which I really, really enjoyed, but still, this game deserves so much more. I just recently saw 30 copies of this game at a dollar store. That's horrible. I really do hope that eventually another Titanfall game does come around the corner because this game deserves so much more than it got in the end. And those are my reasons why I think that Titanfall 2 was the best action game of the decade. For my RPG game of the decade, it's pretty evident. It's Mass Effect 2. For a game that's 10 years old, this game still holds up for me, not only in its storytelling, but its fun gameplay, its renegade paragon mechanics, its fantastic final level, which did lead into a kind of mixed reception for Mass Effect 3, but Mass Effect 2 just did everything right, in my opinion. It did everything right with its characters, it did everything right with its combat, it did everything right with its storytelling. I feel that Mass Effect 2 took the best parts of Mass Effect 1 and honed them. It made them perfect. The Mass Effect game trilogy is my favorite trilogy in gaming history. I have played all of the games multiple times. I have seen the different avenues. I still watch videos about this game, still to this day. I'm always discovering something new about this game and the entire trilogy. I didn't come close to touching Andromeda with a 50 foot pole, but I will always, always love Mass Effect 2. And that is why I believe wholeheartedly that Mass Effect 2 should be considered RPG of the decade. Now we're coming into my game of the decade. There's several games that could be totally be considered Red Dead Redemption was fantastic. Its 
sequel even better in my opinion. Mass Effect 2 obviously being one of my favorite games of all time. However, there is one game that has stuck with me and many other gamers and is still talked about heavily to this day. Not just because of what the game was, but the because of the questions that the game asked. My recommendation for game of the decade is Spec Ops The Line. Rarely has a product like this ever made gamers question what they do in all form of video games, especially shooters. This was a huge gamble by Jaeger and I feel it paid off. It's story and it's design that base itself around the idea of cognitive dissonance, several psychological exams of soldiers just make this game so incredibly memorable. For a game that should have totally been written off as a forgettable game of 2012, this game defied expectations and really changed the landscape of gaming design. It really made you think about its concept it made you think about its design. It made you think about gaming in general. And I love that it did that. This game is a unique product and it did something that was well outside of the norm. It addresses the fourth wall, it addresses you. It addresses so many commonplace aspects of gaming and totally turns it on its head and makes you think about them in a way that I didn't even think was possible in a game. I'll be surprised if anyone else suggests Spec Ops The Line, but because of its execution, because of its gameplay and its concept, and because of its incredibly insightful questions to you, the gamer, that's why I believe that Spec Ops The Line should be considered for game of the decade. Anyways, guys, those are my suggestions. Those are my thoughts. Victor, I can't wait to see what you do with all these submissions, and I can't wait to see the final videos. Thank you again for doing this. This is such a cool idea and such a great way to engage with your fans and just help keep the electronic playground going. We'll just keep this going forever, baby. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Make sure to watch Victor's videos when he puts these all together. I'll make sure to put a link in the descriptions when those come out. I can't wait to see them. I'm super excited. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Can't wait to do it again next year. Thanks for watching the video. You're probably wondering who I am. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <sniffs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well. Couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural. Or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.